Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. And today, we got a good one for you. Look at me, I'm doing the spicy hands thing. Spicy hands. <laughs> uh, what are we doing? We are doing our favorite daily trainers of 20, what year are we in? No one knows, it's still, the last two years messed everything 2022, up. 2022, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, best daily trainers of 2022 so far. Before we get into it, please subscribe and like this video. We promise you're gonna like this video and you, we promise if you're new here, you're gonna <laughs> like this, this is nonsense. And uh, I'm not gonna promise, but I'd still like you to like the video, subscribe, whatever, because we're gonna get into some shoes. And right. then later on, you're gonna wanna see the follow up to some of these shoes, their reviews. Exactly. So exactly. subscribe and we'll do you a favor. Let's give a little preface as to kind of how we're doing this so people know what our methodology is. June 2022, we have shoes that are have been out for a little while. We have some shoes that are coming out soon. We have some shoes, shoes that are coming out in September. But what they all have in common is that they're shoes that we love. And that we've run in. More specifically, these are the best daily trainers. So, you know, we're not counting racing shoes, up-tempo shoes, maybe even some max cushion. But what do we shoes. mean by daily trainers? That is a good question because a lot of people wonder what that means. So why don't you tell us? Daily trainer is your shoe for all your mileage. It's probably, for most runners, that's the most dependable shoe. So if you're looking for a shoe and you're new to running, or you know, even if you're a professional runner, the daily trainer is that shoe that puts all the work in for you. So yeah. that you like, wake up Monday morning, what shoe are you going for, Robbie? The daily trainer. But it's that shoe that you're gonna wear for most of your mileage. By the way, no particular order, we're just rolling these out as I basically list them on my computer. I don't even know how I got the order. First up, Asics Glide Ride 3. All right, this one's a bit of a surprise. This one didn't even, it made a nice shoe last year with the Glide Ride 2, but none of us were like, huh, best daily trainer or one of the best daily trainers? Yeah, this one was a huge surprise for me. I actually hadn't run in either the previous version before because of, I think, your thoughts, I had no interest in running in it. I think I got this after you and Meg had run it and you're like, you wanna try this shoe. Yeah. And you were right, I love this shoe. Right, why don't you break down what makes this shoe so much fun and why it's on our daily trainer well, list. So one of the things that I love about this shoe is, well, for one thing, the flight, fight, why, why do we have to do this? Fight, basics? is it fight or flight? It's <laughs> fight or flight foam. <laughs> uh, flight foam. <laughs> yeah, I made Robbie Flight laugh. foam <laughs> blast plus which is this soft, like cushioning, bouncy, just comfortable all around. This shoe has a plate in it, has a rocker plate. The roll through it is just so guide smooth. Sole. It's the guide sole. Everything combined, put together in this shoe makes it one of the smoothest cruisers I think that I've ever smooth tried. Smooth is the word. <laughs> yeah. This is it. It's almost like a sandwich if you think about the material. So what Robbie was talking about was that Flight Foam Plus, Blast Plus mm -hmm. on the top layer. So when your foot comes down, it squishes into a nice cushioning. In between that and the regular fight, Flight, I'm doing it now. <laughs> In between that and the regular Flight Foam is a TPU plastic plate that kind of keeps the shape of the shoe. What I like about this shoe is it kind of is like two shoes in one. You're getting a nice soft cushion trainer, mm -hmm. but then a very stable platform. So it's like, it's changing the surface you run on. So like where some shoes you can really feel the road or you know, you're gonna right. get off camber and stuff like that. This one, I feel like you have a platform that you're landing on, but your foot sinks in and that plate helps you just roll through your stride. Yeah, yeah. so this is just a great uh, daily trainer, long run shoe for sure. Uh, anyone doing some marathon training, this will keep, keep you comfortable. Yeah, definitely. And this is $150 and it's out now. Thomas, New Balance 1080 V12. All right, you're looking at it, the 1080 V12. Now for us, in the past, the 1080 has been a real superstar. Yeah, I mean, it's always, I think it's always been on our list of best daily trainers, yeah. most dependable at least, so. It's New Balance's, our favorite from New Balance's daily trainers pretty much. I know some people like the 880. What's the difference between this one and that one? More cushioning. This particular model, we found some sizing issues, so you're gonna wanna try on your size and the size down. Yeah, it was, this definitely ran long, so keep that in mind when you're ordering the shoe. 
Yeah, tell me about it. Fresh Foam X midsole, what else we got? We got a very stretchy knit upper, stretches in the toe box where you need it, and then it's kind of rigid over the arch holding your foot in. This again, is one of those shoes that doesn't die. This has got your Fresh Foam X in the midsole, the cushioning just lasts and lasts and lasts and you've got plenty of rubber. One of the reasons we put this one in here isn't just because we like it, but who loves it? Uh, Widefoot Jarrett? Yeah, yeah. Widefoot Jarrett, this is one of his go-to <laughs> trainers for days. So Robbie, how much does this go for? So this is $160 and it's available now. Pretty basic, well-cushioned shoe. Okay, let's move on. All right, so next we have the Diodora Vigore. I think it's- I think it's like <laughs> blue shoe. Blue is oui, in there, yeah. Oui, oui. Is that, oui? like, yeah. I just phrased the, French. No, shit. What's it, bonjour, no. I don't bonjour? Uh, no, bonjour is French. Bonjour, no is Italian. Uh, maybe I don't know any Italian. Yeah. So this That's is the, the Diodora Blue Shield Mythos Bigore. Yeah. This is a weird pick because it's super heavy. Super heavy. Like, Earth's gravity <laughs> is yanking you down in this one. It's... A lot of rubber on the outsole. Yeah. I mean, I have to admit, when we first got this shoe, I was like, there's no way I'm going to run in this. And then. <laughs> and Brandon, who loves lightweight, faster shoes, ran in it. He loved this shoe. And so I gave it a shot. Yeah. I what went out, think? I did my miles, and I was like, wow, this really is a nice running shoe. It's crazy. And it is more of a, it's meant to be more of a stability shoe. Um, and our stability reviewers liked it. I mean, I think they had a ding against the weight, but I will say this is one of the most comfortable shoes out there. Yeah. If you're looking for even just a walking shoe that's comfortable, this has got to be one of the most comfortable. And I think that's what gave us, uh, I, I'll tell you where it tipped the scales for this one. It's fun to run in. Yes, it's a little heavy, but it's still nice for those daily miles. This is a great looking shoe. Comfort wise, this is a very comfortable shoe. In fact, we'll probably be making a most comfortable running shoes list, at least on the website, and this will definitely be on there. So. Yeah. Um, and this is uh, $170 and is available now. Next up, we have the Saucony Ride 15. Thomas, tell us a little bit about the Ride 15. It's been around for a while. It has. This is sort of a surprise and it's sort of not. Uh, I've always liked the ride. It was kind of that vanilla shoe though. It was like... Yeah, that's a pretty good description. Like it's that person that you see that you're like, I can't remember their name. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. You know, kind of, yeah. you know, not ugly, not good looking, just right. They're there. They exist. This shoe, actually, it kind of like elevated this whole line for me. And I was like, uh, I'm not sure I'm going to like it. It's got the regular Power Run EVA foam. But the magic is here, and yeah. it's two things. Go ahead. It's the geometry of the midsole. They did a really nice job of making this roll through your stride. It's got the wing out on the side that adds a little stability and guides your foot through the, through the stride. It just feels good underfoot. It is a little firmer, but they threw in their Power Run PB. And this is substantial. Feel how much squish is there. Yeah, that's a pretty squish insole there. So that gives the shoe a little bit of that cushioning when you land and the roll through this surprisingly can propel you at pretty good pace. This shoe, this version of the Ride lost an ounce over last year's versions. That's pretty significant, a lot lighter on the foot. Yeah, we were pretty surprised by yeah, it. This one, this one's definitely up there in my top tier daily trainers. I was, like I said, I was really surprised, but it feels good. It has that right mix of just firm enough to feel responsive mm -hmm. with that soft cush that you land that you're like, oh, that feels good underfoot. This shoe is one of those shoes I think transcends the daily trainer like genre where if you had to have one shoe that you're like, I wanna be able to race in it. I wanna be able to do my daily miles in it. I wanna be able to do my tempo workouts in it. This shoe can kind of handle it. And that's $140 and again, available now. Tom. Robbie, I can't believe you're even saying that. How is that? I can't believe this is on the list, but whatever. You've typically not really been a fan of on Yeah, writing. which I think I've said my, I've aired my grievances in past on reviews many times. And I have to agree with Robbie. I haven't been wowed by a lot of their shoes. When we got this one, wow. Yeah, the on cloud monster. And this is. What you should do, you should do, uh, what's his name? Wow. 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 <laughs> Like Owen Wilson? Yeah, Owen Wilson. <laughs> wow. 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 Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So yeah, we have the On Cloud Monster, which is On's max cushion shoe, which, which means it's a, a regular cushion regular shoe cushion <laughs> for On. Uh, despite the name, the On is usually fairly firm, so having this amount of cushion, Helion foam, is really a nice treat. I gotta say, when I first ran in the shoe, I was not only surprised, I was very surprised. One of the things I loved about this shoe was that it was, I felt like it was the first time that you could actually feel the cloud pods kind of collapsing. Compress. Yeah, compressing yeah. and re, uh, rebounding. They made the Helion foam a little bit softer. It's a little higher stack. And that's exactly what you feel when you come down, you feel the crush of the cloud mm -hmm. and then the rebound of the energy coming back as it reforms off your stride. Yeah, and it was kind of a unique sensation that I feel like I haven't felt in other running shoes, which was cool. And overall, just like rolled really smoothly through the stride, pretty decent weight for this too. That was also something that On sometimes struggles with. So I think it comes in around 10 ounces. Now I will say the only issue we had with this is the upper was kind of a little loose, baggy, weird. It's not the most structured upper. Which, I think you- Which is weird because usually On shoes have a super structured upper. Yeah. And the other thing was we did find that uh, you had a little delamination on the upper on um, one of your pairs. So yeah. That's something to look out for. Yeah. But otherwise at $170, I. I think it falls in line with all those other shoes and is and for on that's yeah that's they're right a little there. pricier yeah okay so here's one that kind of shocked us out of the gate last year when they came out with the first version of it and this update is like a lot better even yeah so the Puma Velocity Nitro 2 just a little more cushion a little mm -hmm. softer feel it has a really nice ride it's pretty basic when you think about it it is, but the nitro foam in here, like you said, uh, just a little bit softer than last year's version. The Puma Grip outsole is still amazing. Might be the best rubber in the game. That and Adidas Continental. What's weird about this shoe is it wins for not having any negatives. The upper fits well. The cushioning is dialed in. Mm -hmm. It has some energy return. It has good grip. There's nothing to complain about. Yeah, I think the best selling point about this well, literally, is the price $120. I mean, you're coming in way lower than a lot of shoes out there. Yeah, and I do think it is one of those values that the Nitro Foam holds up pretty well. You have a shoe that for a very reasonable price, you're gonna get a ton of miles out of. And it, I mean, that looks good. It does. Yeah. Robbie, Solomon, Glide Max. Yeah, this is one that I would say I didn't expect to be on this list. So, and I actually haven't run in this, so you're gonna have to tell me the tale. Well, uh, we always bring it up. But I'm going to bring it up again. All right. We ran in the trail version of this, mm -hmm. the Ultra Glide. Yeah. Which and was a great trail shoe from last year. Yeah. Lots of cushioning. Feels great underfoot. It's one of those comfort shoes. And this takes all that right to the road. And it does a great job. You have a nice cushion uh, feel underneath here. I forget. They put Ultra Glide on here, but yeah. that's not the name it's of the, the foam. Energy Surge is the foam. Yeah. One. Energy yeah. Surge. Ultra Ride is the line of these shoes that are going to be cushion road mm -hmm. road and trail shoes not to be confused with, with the ultra glide which is last year's shoe and then the glide max <laughs> yeah. which is this shoe the upper fits well this is again one of those shoes that it doesn't have a lot of stuff that is exciting to talk about it just has good cushioning and a good fitting upper it just feels good underfoot i did find that one thing this one did start to feel a little bit thin under the under the palm of the foot after a few runs overall i really enjoyed all the miles in this shoe i like the way that shoe looks i feel like it's divisive i've seen some people say they hate the way it looks i like it I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why you would hate the way this <laughs> looks. It's got a nice roomy toe box. I think it can accommodate lots of different foot sizes. My narrow foot fit in here well, but I do think that if you had a little wider foot and you wanted to try this shoe, you have that room. You've got a really nice stable platform underneath your feet, plenty of rubber. Like again, it, it's just gonna be one of those shoes that eats up miles. And for Solomon, going into the max cushion game, it's like a big move because they're usually known for their European segment more firmer faster shoes so yeah kind of a big deal yep all right and that shoe is available now for 150 dollars all right uh oh here we go <laughs> you can't talk about daily trainers without talking about the peg 39 the nike or pegasus. the pegasus yeah <laughs> aired zoom 
Nike Air, Pe- Nike Air Zoom Pegasus. Yeah, there's no 39. Next, no next in there. Yeah. No React. I don't think so. Oh, maybe there is. Is there a React? There might be. It might be the. <laughs> it, I guess it would be the Nike Air Zoom React Pegasus 39. See, I don't think there is a React in the name, which is BS because they put it in all the other names. Yeah. So I feel like if you're gonna commit to it, you need to make the name as long as possible. Just I don't. Yeah. Be obnoxious. I don't think we would have a best daily trainers list without Nike Pegasus on it for years now. Yeah, I mean, it's even though it has had some changes over the years and tweaks and here and there, it's still, it's always been at the $120 price point until this year. Yeah. And it's just a great value. It's pretty much the gold standard in like your daily trainers. So what they've done to upgrade it this year has made it feel a little bit more, more nimble and kind of covers more like range than your just daily plotter. Yeah, which is exciting because some of the shoes we've seen from Nike have actually started to gain more weight. So this is the one that really lost almost an ounce, I think. Almost an ounce. It has the React foam. The React feels more similar to one of Robbie's favorite shoes. I'd say is Zerometer. What shoe am I talking about that you always mention? Epic React. Epic React. I thought it was gonna be a little thin under the toe. You can see it here, but what have they done? Well, they have the air zoom unit under the toe, which they had in last year's version as well. And actually they have another air zoom unit now in the heel. So you're getting that sort of responsive pop that you would get. Uh, now I will say in this year's version, and it might be because, be because the React is a little bit softer, I don't feel as much of a pop off the toe as I did in the 38, but you can still pick up the pace because of that lightweight. Yeah, both Robbie and I just did our first thoughts video on this shoe and we were both really happy with this update. The upper just fits perfect. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have one complaint so far about this shoe. If you haven't worn Nike before, it is the fit is a bit narrow. If you have a narrow foot, I mean, you love it. This is definitely not one for the wide foot fam, mm -hmm. but the rubber on the bottom seems to grip even better than previous models. And I believe they added an extra flex group here because I think there was only one last year. All right. So a little bit more flexibility. And this has like almost, enough cleat that you could almost take it off road. I mean, you could. It's basically up there with their trail shoes. Yeah, Maybe so better. this one's gonna be tough to beat uh, as far as the daily trainers. So far, this one's in the lead for me. There's a trainer that's coming up that I haven't gotten a chance to put miles in that may be a contender. Yeah. But for right now, this shoe, they've done an amazing job with it. And it says established 1972, because you know what? Nike's been around for 50 years now. That, that's the 50 year anniversary celebration yeah. right there. Boom. Put it on the toe. <laughs> Beep. So this is uh, $130, so it did go up by $10 this year. Pretty much every shoe has. So even at $130, it still undercuts almost all the other shoes on this list. Yeah. Especially for people who are just starting out running who might be watching this video, this is one of those shoes where you can take through a whole training cycle, even if you want to mix it some speed work, just have it for your first half marathon shoe or marathon Maybe shoe. Marathon, yeah. I think it's a great, I mean, the peg was my first marathon shoe. Peg 30, right. 33, I think. The Flywire holds your foot in well. Like I said, the upper is great. Rubber traction is great. Cushioning is insane. Yeah, and the uh, release date for this not sure. We were initially told mid-July, but we've also seen coming soon on Nike's website. So by the time this video comes out, it might even be out. Yeah. So sometime in the next month. And there's some exciting colors. I know this one doesn't look really exciting on like photos on the gram and stuff like that, but it's actually a really nice color when you're seeing it in person. I mean, this is a shoe that, you know, works well with anything. We wore the, you wear the peg for lifestyle all the time. Yeah, I, 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 the peg 38 went to uh, di not Universal, Universal Studios with me. And walking around on that concrete for <laughs> three days and my feet still felt okay, you know, I gotta give it up go. for the pig. All right, the next shoe is probably one of our most anticipated shoes for 2022. Yeah, I mean. Probably yours too. Probably. The A6 Nova Blast 3. This is the one that we have to give a caveat for because we said we run in every shoe that we're talking about here. This is one that we haven't run in. This is Brandon's pair who got seated, one of the only early pairs that we've gotten. We'll be getting them soon. Yeah. So we're going off of Brandon's feedback the on The man it. behind the camera. Yeah, and what you have to know is they did some nice updates with it. Hit them with what they did. I mean, we love the last two versions. First one, okay. Second one, amazing. Which is weird because some people are like, I love the first yeah. one and the second one, but let's just say the Nova Blast 
has been a fan favorite for people. For sure. On both sides. Yeah, so with this newest version, they actually added a bit more stacks. So the midsole only is 31 millimeters in the heel, 23 in the forefoot. Now that seems low, but you're not counting the outsole and the insole, which those two comes out to almost like 38 millimeters in the heel. So pretty high stack there. It's actually, for all that though, it's an ounce lighter than last year's version, which is kind of Insane, crazy. Insane, because it wasn't heavy. Yeah, and uh, now in the midsole here, we have Flight Foam Blast Plus. And that's, if you recall from the first shoe in this uh, review, we did the, the Glide Ride, which had a top layer of Flight Foam Blast Plus. This is a full layer. Yeah. And the durometer set a little firmer than the Glide Ride. This is going to be that shoe that I think, again, like the Pegasus, can really take a runner from their daily training, speed work, yeah. racing. Like, you, this is one of those ones that I would say, okay, I can go the full cycle with this guy. Yeah, and I mean, again, lightweight, breathable, mesh upper, pretty decent rubber coverage on the bottom. It's similar to last to the last yeah. version. This shoe is gonna be a lot of people's favorite shoe. Yeah, I mean, just looking at the response that we, on Instagram, we post this shoe, people are losing their minds, rightfully so. And this is $140, so, you know, decent price right point. Right in there. And this releases September 1st, so yeah. coming soon. It'll That'll be here before you know if it. If I were you, I'd be waiting by the computer, hit that purchase order when yeah. this one comes this out. This is gonna be a big one. I mean, the only thing I can say is Brandon said that the upper fits well on this. Loves the new tongue in it. The midsole works out well. He's been just grinding miles in this. I think he's put it probably over, you know, he's had it for like a week or two and he's probably put over 50 miles in it. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, he's loving it. And uh, he didn't get the Pegasus, so we can't do <laughs> comparison right there, but we probably will do, if you watch this channel a lot, we do between two shoes. The one that we're gonna be excited to give you is the Pegasus Nova Blast 3 between two shoes. Yep. And we'll we'll see which one ends up coming out on top. All right, so uh, this is weird, Robbie. Costume change. Yeah. Uh, no, this is what happens when you get a new shoe shortly after you finish doing a video on the best shoes so far, and then you're like, whoa, I ran this. Now, I'm gonna caveat, I've got one run in this, but both Megan and I were like, wow. And so we're gonna throw it in there because I don't right. think we had a Hoka, Hoka in the mix. Yeah, and same, I uh, only got one run in as well, but y y when you know, you kinda know, so. Yeah. Uh, so this is the Mach 5, and this is actually available now for uh, $140, so. That's not a bad price. Yeah, and so I didn't realize this, but it's a combination of the Mach 4 and the Supersonic, at least that's what they say. Yeah, here's what I think Which they're I don't saying. Know good thing. It, yeah, the Supersonic we weren't fans of. We really like the Mach 4. What we're seeing here is an update to this Pro 5 Plus midsole here, and it's a dual layer, so you have that with a firmer layer of their traditional, like, hardened rubberized EVA that gives you the durability for the bottom. What I like about this shoe is it feels super versatile. Yeah, it's fast, it's pretty snappy, but you still get the soft level comfort in the heel and very light on the feet. Yeah, How much it, does it weigh? For my size 10 and a half, 8.6 ounces or 243 grams. Pretty light. Which is light for a daily trainer and it feels light on your foot. Uh, overall, the fit of the upper was great. I dig this new tongue. The new, t the f I think they call it a lay flat tongue, which it indeed lays flat. So. Yeah, it's nice. It's gusseted on both sides. Upper fit well. You still got that little bit of an elf collar. What I really dug about this shoe was how light and bouncy it feels. This new foam, the dual density, reminds me a little bit of a shoe that we've already talked about, which is the Glide Ride 3, where you get that soft landing with a firmer, stable feel on the bottom. This does it without any type of plate involved. Congrats, Hoka. You snuck it in there. Almost missed the boat on the best daily trainer so far in 2022. And yeah, that's it for this one. Yeah, I'd be happy to put miles on it. As a matter of fact, leave them for vacation, Robbie. This is one of the shoes I'm taking. All right. Anything you want to wrap this up with, Robbie? So if you want to pick up any of these shoes, we put the shop links in the description. If you have any questions or comments, well, leave them in the comments. And make sure you check us, check out our other channels. We have Instagram, our podcast, The Drop. That's kind of our community hub almost. You know what we <laughs> never pitch that we should? What? And because like you get everything there is our email list. 
So if you go to That's our website easy. and you sign up for the email, we'll put a link in the description. Yeah, for that you weekly Robbie writes up an email that has every video review we've done, every website post we've done, even some of the Instagram posts, and you get usually a little editorial <laughs> note from Robbie, which depending on his mood can be very uplifting or <laughs> tell you the world is ending <laughs> or super sarcastic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and anyways, I think that's everything. Um, yeah, I'm excited for the second half of 2022 to see if there's anything else even more, ex more exciting, more cool that comes out. Yeah. So we'll see. And if there's a shoe you've tried that came out this year, 2022, that you think we're missing off this list, definitely put it in the comments. Yeah, feel free to argue with us. We're cool with it. Yeah, you can even call us names. All right. Best forever in the game. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like Beavis and Butthead right now. <laughs>